bare bones. Hey. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. 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 Did you all survive January? <laughs> yes. January can sometimes be just as hard as the holidays. It seems to last forever, and dark gray skies can get some people down in blue. We here at Bones hope you're doing well. You know we pray for you, right? Maybe, maybe not by name, unless you've reached out and told us of a specific need, but we lift our watching audience up to the Father on a regular basis. We consider you family. You're our tribe. We want you to know we're here for you. Do you guys have a need that we might be able to help with? Reach out and let us know. Don't let yourselves bear the burden alone. So, how many of you saw the movie, uh, the new movie uh, Avatar? You see yeah. One? yeah. Yep. This weekend. Well, we saw it and we loved it. Good we're stuff. actually planning on seeing it again. One of the lines in that movie that was also said in the first movie was, "I see you." It was a way of expressing to someone that they acknowledge them, you know them, you see them. Those words didn't strike a chord until the Monday morning after the weekend we saw it while I was listening to the Lectio 365 devotional. My thought was, does Jesus see me? And what does he even know about me? Like, I'm one in several billion people here on earth. What does he even know about what I'm going through, how I feel, or my struggles? And that, folks, is what we're going to touch on tonight. I know you've heard us say several times here at Bones that Jesus put skin in the game. We mean that he stepped down from heaven and became a human being and lived here on this earth just like the rest of us. Now, some would stay, say that he was still God. He had special powers. He didn't really experience the same stuff we do. However, according to the Bible, all he had was the Holy Spirit. That exact same spirit that lives in you and me if we've asked Jesus into our hearts. So we have the same powers that Jesus did. So let's take some time and answer those questions I posed just a minute ago. Does Jesus know you? Well, in Matthew 10, verses 29 through 31, it says, and I'm reading from the message, What's the price of a pet canary? Just some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to it even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you, down to the last detail, even numbering the hairs on your head. And in Psalms 139, 13 through verse 16, again from the message, it says, Oh yes, you shaped me first inside then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, you're breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. So yeah, I'd say he knows us pretty well. Second question, does he even know what I'm going through, how I feel, or my struggles? I'm going to bullet point these, so try to keep up. Jesus felt hunger. Matthew 4, when he was out in the desert after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, I'd say he was pretty hungry. Mm -hmm. Same chapter, Jesus was also felt tempted. The devil tempted him three times. But those, by far, are not the only emotions Jesus experienced that you and I have also experienced. In John 15, verses 10 through 11, Jesus himself talks about the joy he has by keeping his Father's commands. He says we, too, can have his joy if we keep his commands and, in doing so, remain in his love. There are several verses that talk about how exhausted Jesus would get. Have you ever been exhausted? Back when I was working 10 hours days, that's all I felt was exhausted. Jesus combated the exhaustion by getting away and spending quiet time with his father. In Mark 6, 31, he encouraged his disciples to come with him. He said, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Now, we all know that Jesus got angry. The first verse that would come to mind is probably when he went into the temple and flipped over a few tables. Have you ever been that angry? I can honestly say that I've kicked my fair share of items across a room I've been so mad. How about referring to people as animals? In Matthew 23, verse 33, he calls the teachers of the law and the Pharisees hypocrites, and then he calls them snakes and a brood of vipers. 
Ever been so mad at somebody you called them a snake or another name? I know I have. But it, we need to remember is that Jesus never let his anger lead to sin. When we lash out, it's usually because we're not getting our way. And in that of itself is sin. But when Jesus got angry, it was because God wasn't getting his way, which is called righteous indignation. Mm -hmm. Basically, Jesus' anger was, was justified, not a sin. How about sadness or sorrow? Does Jesus, does, does Jesus know how you feel when you're sad? Taken from Lectio's 365's devotional from Friday, January 20th, let's look at John 11, verses 32 through 35 from the NIV. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw <clears throat> the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid them, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. <clears throat> Losing a friend can be a terrible loss. A sadness that goes deep. The devotional that day made a point that I hadn't thought of before. They stated, John's gospel tells us that Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. He knew he would revive, arrive too late to heal his friend. And Jesus also knew that God was going to give Lazarus a second chance of life. So it begs the question, what brought Jesus to tears? Maybe, just maybe, it was because Jesus chose not to rush ahead to the miracle. But instead, he took the time to listen to his friends and allowed himself to be affected by their grief and his. There was another loss that Jesus was affected by that the Bible doesn't go into too much detail about. We know that Jesus lost his earthly father, Joseph. So Jesus even understands the sadness we experience at the loss of a parent. Want a few more emotions that Jesus shares with us? <clears throat> How about compassion? Matthew 9, 22 through 20, 20 through 22, Jesus had compassion on the women who had been bleeding for 12 years. And we all know the compassion he had on the woman who was brought to him that had been found committing adultery. I think it would be safe to say that every person he healed, he had compassion on. He even had compassion for the criminal while he himself was dying on the cross right next to him. How about being frustrated? I know that one really well. But did Jesus ever get frustrated? Well, in Matthew 17, Jesus is confronted by a man whose demon-possessed son couldn't be healed by his disciples. He had some choice words to say to the people. Sounds like he was pretty frustrated with them. Verse 17, Jesus says, You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. How about agony? Are you dreading an upcoming procedure? Is there an interview or trial coming up where you may have to relive a hard time in your life? You think Jesus couldn't possibly have dreaded anything like that, right? It says in Luke 22, Jesus was so distraught, praying so earnestly in the garden about what he knew was coming, that he sweated drops of blood. You see, Jesus understands. Hebrews 4.15 assures us we have a high priest who can sympathize with all our weaknesses and has not only been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin, but has also endured more suffering than we will ever have to experience ourselves. Empathy? Has your heart ever gone out to somebody? Somebody who's hurting for what they're going through? You can see Jesus' heart for those hurting in the world in everything he did. Raising the poor widow's son, feeding the 5,000, reaching out and touching the leper, not just healing him from a distance, but touching him. That's talked about in Matthew chapter 8. And even while he was dying on the cross, his heart was focused on his mother, wanting to make sure she would be cared for once he was gone. Do you remember that? He says to John, who was standing with his mother, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The last one I wanted to mention is betrayal. 
Have you ever been betrayed by somebody you thought you could trust? I'm not talking about being unfriended on Facebook, although I know that can knock the knees out from some of us. I'm talking about a betrayal that cuts to the bone. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ever have a spouse be unfaithful? Had your best friend say something to others not knowing you were in earshot? One of Jesus' close friends turned him over to be killed. And the rest of his close friends all deserted him. And Peter, the one who was adamant he would never leave him, denied him three times. And something that we all struggle with mightily, Jesus forgave them all. While hanging from the cross, he declared it for all to hear, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So let's recap. Did Jesus feel the same things we do? Hunger, temptation, joy, exhaustion, anger, sadness, compassion, frustration, agony, empathy, betrayal? So do you think Jesus knows you? Does he know what you're struggling with? Does he see you? Yeah, I'd say he does. Well, thanks for joining us tonight or catching us on replay. Like I said at the beginning, if you have something you need, please reach out. We want to be your neighbor and lend a hand if we can. We want to be the blessing you may need. You can reach us at barebonesfellowship at gmail.com or you can message any one of us you see giving the messages here on Wednesday nights. So let's end this evening by taking a moment to settle our hearts, to take a deep breath and pause, and be still in the presence of a God who loves us so much. Jesus, in this new season, we invite you to shape our lives and set the direction of our year. As we listen to your word each day, we long to imitate your works and we welcome your spirit as we fix our eyes on you. Father, help us to live each day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen. 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 Go out this week, my friends. Be blessed. And but be, be the, the blessing. blessing. Good night, folks. <laughs>